this conference is important to me personally is for because for 20 years, 25 years, I've been working on monitoring, evaluation and impact assessment questions. I'm wanting to know if the organisations I worked for were doing a good job. Um, and in particular, wanting to know if those people that we sought to benefit were actually benefiting at all from the process. So I think this uh, conference has dealt with some of those issues, talked about that, and recognise that is a broader concern than just mine um, in the international development community. So it's brought some interesting people together to have those debates. This is important partly because we use a lot of artefacts um, t in today's world, particularly given the current context, given the economic crisis and then you want value for your money and you want to see what, what are the results being produced, you want evidence. So there's a lot of talk around what do you use, what is good, what works, what gives you the right kind of evidence that you may want. But there is little space for reflection on why do you do this? Uh, what is it that you're after? And, and the politics around that in terms of who constructs that artifact, who uses that. So this space sort of gives you um, a, a sort of an arena to discuss all that and not just, just among yourselves. Like I'm an academic, so I discuss that with other academics, but rarely do I have the chance to discuss it with the donors, with other international NGOs who are uh, implementing certain programs that AI may have to evaluate. So on a personal level, it's important for that, but on for the international community um, who work on development, it's also important to look at these issues and questions. Well, there are key certain things we've written. One, the better understanding of development world. Number two, there is this issue of the challenges of dealing with results frameworks. Uh, number three, the issue of how to develop mechanisms con for constructive engagement to balance the expectations of the donor and then the expectation of the recipients of development aid. These are key things that need to be taken back and reflect into the way we operate as a program. Uh, well, a few things. Um, one thing is that always remembering that we have agency. So a lot of the time when you're up against a certain kind of agenda or something that really goes against the values that you believe in and you, you sort of have to use these particular types of artifacts that you are being um, asked to use as a development practitioner, then you sort of start resisting that and you sort of start building up this enemy. That, so it becomes an us versus them kind of um, uh, mind frame that you have and that's not what it is I mean every there's no villain in this piece you know everybody's sort of feeling the squeeze in a sense and everybody's questioning in terms of what, what they do and how they do it so the fact that you can engage and that there are spaces I mean in in terms of the engagement itself, it's not that always that you would be successful, but the fact that you get to raise questions, the fact that you should be aware that there are certain opportunities and be able to grab those opportunities when they present themselves, I think that that's what I, uh, was very important for me to sort of listen to in terms of the stories that we were discussing. Uh, look, I think that um, the first day, well, there were moments when I was thinking, this is a bit negative. Um, uh, we We are kind of in quite polarised kind of positions. I think by day two people have kind of gone through a kind of, some kind of cathartic process, perhaps, and we're starting to be much more positive. We're starting to see that their own agency and their own power uh, in changing things. And I think we came up with some really interesting ideas about how that might happen. I'm particularly intrigued by this idea of having a, a kite mark, uh, if you like, for, uh, for the purchasers and providers of evaluations that guarantees to whoever is uh, engaging them that actually they have standards, they've got ethical standards, and they're prepared to, to be transparent about that. So I like that kind of idea. Practical, possible, and might be done. Um, two things. Uh, one is that opportunities sort of, you don't plan them, they present themselves. So you have to be very nimble enough. You have to have the evidence then. So that's why you, you it's important to have the evidence, but it's not that the evidence drives it or creates the opportunity. But when it is there that you should uh, be able to use that and t grab that. The second thing is that um, sort of um, when you are in the middle of it, when you're doing everyday kind of grind in terms of doing the work, whether you're consulting using a particular tool or whether you're a donor and planning a particular kind of policy that you want to implement that you kind of 
forget to stop and sort of smell the coffee that you need to be doing that and um, and that it comes that this everyday engagement and how you engage with others it comes at an emotional cost that you kind of forget um, these tools are I mean they it, it expresses power and when you do hold the power you kind of forget that you are exercising that and there's nothing wrong in exercising the power but you have to sort of also realize the kind of effect that has on other people and what kind of effect do you want if you want to keep the relationship how you should be behaving you know so uh, those two things very important the most striking thing I saw heard all done um, I think it was the fact that for most people what they felt is the gap in knowledge on this issue is most acute at a senior management level, often in their own organization. And what quite a lot of the strategies I heard being discussed were actually about how do we educate um, and understand what senior managers uh, do, what pressures they're under, and how we can help them to understand this agenda more fully. Um, and I think that was quite striking because people often talk about or the, the capacity of local organizations, the capacity of local communities, but the capacity of senior management to actually um, address some of these concerns, I think, was, a, was an interesting take for me. One of the most striking things is how, some, how the obsession with resource frameworks becomes all over and everybody seems scared. Number two, we underestimate the power at our disposals the power of networking, the power of consortium, I mean group influence, you know, how all this can influence results. So this conference actually eliminates these issues. Uh, I won't say doing it differently. I think I do it. I get to do it partly because I'm an academic, but I think sort of pushing for it more in terms of having spaces, creating spaces uh, within my own organization, but as I also engage with others to be able to reflect, to sort of um, unpack the values that drives us, not just this is what it is and I want the result, but why do I want that particular kind of result, That I, asking that question, and also sort of having and reminding people that there should also be space to fail. You can't have this sort of set mind frame saying that everything that you do, you'd succeed. You also learn from the failures. And I think that's something that we have forgotten in international development, that there will be failures. But are we learning from them? Are we going to do better for us and based on the experience that we have? So that's what I'd be doing. Well, one, one the, the idea needs to be moved forward. That's number one. The idea needs to be moved forward, the real big push. The second is that our, we are now better informed when we come to deal with our funders and indeed those who receive grants from us, how we, we, the kind of engagements that we go through, especially when it comes to looking at realistic results metrics. Because the key thing is about the results. So how do we now passion it in such a way that results are realistic? People are not pushed to produce results because they have to produce results. The results should be realistic, verifiable, and objective results, not when people just try to objectify their subjectivities. But what I want to do is build much closer relationships now I work in a university uh, with international development NGOs um, and bilateral agencies, because I think there's a lot of potential to bring research to bear in order to answer some of the questions that the aid sector needs to answer but also for the aid sector and professionals in the aid sector to be teaching in the classroom um, because practitioners actually offer an enormous uh, set of experiences that could be of great benefit to, to students. And if students are going to be the ones that are the next generation dealing with some of these challenges, having them exposed to those um, as soon as possible is a good, uh, a good uh, way forward.